We're now going to focus on another security concern for our application, and that is cross-site request forgery. Now, I'm going to briefly explain what cross-site request forgery is, but I'd highly recommend you look it up and uh, sort of find out for yourself exactly why it's important and why it's needed. So cross-site request forgery is the ability for someone to redirect you or submit something uh, as you to be able to perform an action on a website that was not intended. So for example, if you were on a website buying something and you had something like in the URL buy item equals one, let's say that that automatically purchased that item for you. Now what someone could do is uh, in whatever way they could redirect you to this page that would purchase an item on your behalf without you wanting that to happen. So we want to do this within our application and prevent against this uh, and attach this to every form that we create by default. So when we are developing, we know that everything is protected against cross-site request forgery. So let's cast our mind back to when we created our config. And remember here we had cross-site request forgery session. Now this is the name of a token that we're going to store. We're going to randomly generate a token. We're going to store a token, which is then going to be placed into a form. When the user submits the form, that token is going to be checked on that request. And that means that without knowing the token within that session, users cannot forward you to a page and perform an action on your behalf. So again, read up on cross-site request forgery and hopefully this will all make sense, but it should make more sense as we uh, progress through this video part. So to protect against cross-site request forgery, we're gonna create some middleware, which is gonna handle the generation of the token and it's gonna uh, handle the checking of the token within any form we create. And then lastly, we're gonna update our login and register forms to use our token. Now the login and register forms aren't uh, um, as much of a deal, but um, of course with this cross-site request forgery protection, it will be on every form. So we just don't need to think about it. It's a really good way to just increase the security of your website. So let's create some new middleware. And I'm gonna call this cross-site request forgery middleware.php. And we define this in the same way as we did our before middleware. We namespace it, so we can just copy that over. We use slim middleware to extend the middleware class. So here we're just gonna say class cross-site request forgery middleware extends middleware. Perfect. So now what we can do is we can have our call method as usual we are going to say this next call, which is required uh, within middleware by Slim. And we are going to attach on a hook before the request. We're gonna look inside of this class or object. I'm gonna check. And that check is another method. So we create a check method here. We now need to pull in the key that we're going to use uh, for the for the storage of this cross-site request forgery token. So this comes from our config. If we remember, it's cross-site request forgery sessions. This is our key that we're using. So let's say this key equals something, and up here we'll store that key. And here we're pulling that from our config, as we said. So we're going to say this app config get cross-site cross -site request forgery dot session, or we could call this key. Uh, it's entirely up to you, you can make that change. So this is now on every request going to check a token. It's not appearing at the moment because we need to add it into our app. So if we open start, we can duplicate this line and we can use cross-site request forgery middleware. We need to import that at the top as well. So let's do that. Like so. so now before every request to our application, we are uh, doing cross-site request forgery checks. That's not the case. We don't want that to be the case. We only want that to happen when we post a form um, or something like that or, or perform some kind of action. So the first thing that we want to do then is actually set that key in the session. So, uh, or set the uh, token in the session. So we're gonna say, if not set, so if not is set dollar underscore session 
this key. So that'll be if this key is not set, then we want to add it to our session. So session, this key equals, and what value do we set here? Well, we want to generate a, a long random number and then we want to hash it. So to do this, to generate a long random number, we know we use random lib like we've used before. So we use random lib and we generate a 128 length string. And we can set this to generate string. And what we now need to do is hash it. So we can just wrap this in this app hash hash. And why don't we just pull this down just so it's a little bit more readable like that. There we go. So we are now, if the session doesn't exist, we're hashing um, a generated string, a large generated string. And just, I guess for now, we could just echo out dollar underscore session just to see what that looks like. So this key. So now we see this key in the session. So this is what we're going to append to our form, which inside of here, we're then going to check if them two match. And again, if this doesn't make sense just at the moment, uh, it will be uh, very clear, hopefully, when we actually put this into our forms. So we're going to grab that session so we can compare the token. So we're going to say this key. And here we're going to check if uh, the request method that we're using, e.g. get, post, put, delete, whatever, is uh, within a certain uh, value. So either put, post or delete we're going to go ahead and check the token. So if we're going to use PHP's in array function, if this app request get method, all get method does is it returns whether it's a get request, a post request, put or whatever. And we're checking that within an array of values. So we want to check for post, put, which we're not using, and delete, which we're also not using, but it's good to know that it's there anyway. So if that's the case, we need to pull out the submitted token from the form. So we can do this by saying submitted token, this app request post this key. Now this key, remember, is the name of the session here, it's cross site request for G token. In fact, this should really be key. So I'm gonna change that now in production development it makes a lot more sense. Uh, let's change this to key here. There we go. So this key, um, we basically need to check if that's available. If it's not available, we're going to set that to an empty string. So what we now need to do is check if the token submitted through from a form matches. But let's take a minute just to try and understand how this is going to work. And we'll implement the key on our login form. So let's go over to views uh, and let's go to auth login. And down here, we're going to have an input, which is a type of hidden. So what we need is a name and a value. The name here is going to be something like cross site request forgery token. And the value is going to be that random uh, string that we saw generated. So we need to share with the views the name of the key and we need to share with the view the actual cross-site request forgery token as well. So we'll replace these in a minute, but inside of our middleware down here, what we're going to do is we're going to say this app view append data. We've seen this before. Cross-site request forgery key is this keys that key that we're storing in our config there and we also want to store uh, share the token as well so cross site request forgery token well where's our token it's that token that we generated in here which we pulled out here so we're now sharing this with our views so what we can do is we can say cross site request forgery key and in here we can say cross site request forgery token so let's take a look at our login form then. So if we go over to login and we inspect our uh, page, here we have our hidden input with a cross site request forgery token and a value of that hashed random string. So when we submit the form, what we want to do is 
the submitting checking goes here, which we've got already. We want to grab the submitted token. So for now, let's just echo out the submitted token. And when we hit login, we output the token. We can compare the token that was submitted in the form to the one that's in our session. If it matches, that's fine. If it doesn't match, we're in trouble and something fishy is going on. So we can just throw an exception. So we're going to check if not this app hash hash check. And we're going to check the token that we generated with the submitted token from the form. Now, if that's not the case, if it doesn't match, we need to throw a new exception. And we're going to say cross site request forgery token mismatch like that. You can do pretty much anything you want here, but I'm going to just throw an exception and we could just get rid of that backslash and use exception up there just to tidy it up a little bit. So let's try and submit the login form. It doesn't matter whether it uh, works or not. Um, you know, we're just submitting through this cross site request forgery protection is now in place and we're checking that token. So in our form, let's let's uh, modify this token and by modifying it, I'm essentially just saying, I don't really know the token because I'm not within your application. I'm some kind of attacker who's trying to submit this, this on your behalf. So I've changed the value of the submitted token. When that's submitted through, we're going to check that we are making a post request, which we are when we submit the login form. We're grabbing the submitted token from the form and then we're checking if it matches the one in the session. And because I've just modified it and I hit login, we see we get an application error and we get a cross site request forgery token mismatch. And that is pretty much it. What we need to do though is add this to every form that we create. It doesn't need to be on every form that we create, but it's better to be a little bit more careful. And also if you ever forget to include the cross site request forgery token, so I've forgotten to include it on the login form now, when I log in, we still get the cross site request forgery token mismatch, which forces you to go ahead and implement this in each form that you create. So let's add it to our register form down here. And because uh, the key and token output, if we ever change the key, it'll update on all of our forms. So we don't need to ever modify that. So on register now, I can hit register and it works. Uh, I can also go ahead and modify the key on register. So let's just change this to something else, hit register and we get a cross site request for tree token mismatch. So now only you or, or your users who are in your application are able to submit any forms. We're not allowing anyone to forge any requests from outside of our application. And that is cross site request forgery protection. And that's how we implement it in our project.